Today we're going to solve a problem involving proportional reasoning. I'm going to show you one strategy of solving this problem. So let's look at the problem. The question says that a standard punch requires two cans of orange juice and one bottle of ginger ale. When using four bottles of ginger ale, how many cans of orange juice are needed for the punch? So let's underline some of the information that's given to us in this problem. Well, we know that we're making a punch, and this punch requires two cans of orange juice and one bottle of ginger ale. If we want to make more punch, we're going to add more ginger ale. So if we add four bottles of ginger ale, how many cans of orange juice are we going to need? For today's lesson, we're going to create a table to represent this data. Remember, there's more than one way to solve this problem, but today I'm going to show you how to solve this using a table. So where do we start? Well, we need to figure out what is the relationship? What are the two things that are being compared to one another? Right, we have orange juice and ginger ale. So let's put this information into our table. Ginger ale, we'll put in the left column, and let's put orange juice in the right column. Do you think it matters which column we place ginger ale and orange juice into? When we're done, you can try it the other way. Now we need to put the data into the table. How many bottles of ginger ale do we use and how many cans of orange juice do we use to make the punch? Well, it says here, for every one bottle of ginger ale, we need two cans of orange juice. So let's put that information into our table. One bottle of ginger ale and two cans of orange juice. What if we don't put any bottles of ginger ale? How many cans of orange juice do you think we're going to need? Right, zero, because we're not making any punch. As soon as we add one bottle of ginger ale, we need to add two cans of orange juice. So what if I have two bottles of ginger ale? How many cans of orange juice do you think we need? Well, if I'm doubling the number of bottles of ginger ale, I need to double the number of cans of orange juice. What's two plus two, or two times two? That gives us four. I want you to start thinking about whether or not you can see a pattern. Think about how the bottles of ginger ale are increasing. We're increasing by one every time. I'm adding one bottle of ginger ale every time. And as I add one bottle of ginger ale, how many cans of orange juice am I adding every time? We're adding two cans of orange juice. So if I add another bottle of ginger ale, how many more cans of orange juice do you think we need to add? Well, according to this pattern, we would add another two cans of orange juice. So we would have a total of six cans of orange juice. Does this make sense? Are you starting to see a pattern? What do you think the next number will be? Well, if I'm adding one bottle of ginger ale every time, let's add another bottle. Now I have four bottles of ginger ale. How many more cans of orange juice do I need to add? Right, we need to add another two cans of orange juice. So we'll have a total of eight cans of orange juice. Do you want to keep going? Sure, let's add one more. One more bottle of ginger ale gives us how many cans of orange juice? You got it, 10. Well, let's go back and see what was this question even asking us to find? The question said, when using four bottles of ginger ale, how many cans of orange juice do we need? Do you see that information on our graph? Where do you see four bottles of ginger ale? That's correct, right here. When we had four bottles of ginger ale, how many cans of orange juice do we need? Eight. So we've answered the question. Therefore, eight cans of orange juice are needed. Can you think of other ways you could have analyzed this table? Are there other patterns you see? Well, we started with one bottle of ginger ale and two cans of orange juice and we figured out that for four bottles of ginger ale we need eight cans of orange juice. How are these numbers related? How do we get from one to four? 
We could multiply by 4. Well, how do we get from 2 to 8? We also multiply by 4. Notice a pattern here. What if I ask you to find out how many cans of orange juice we need if we have 10 bottles of ginger ale? Think about how you could solve this. Well, one way is to see how we get from 1 to 10. 1 times 10 is 10. So what am I going to do to figure out the missing number of cans of orange juice? Well, if we start at 2, what do I need to multiply 2 by to get the answer? Well, since we multiplied 1 times 10, we're going to multiply 2 times 10. What's 2 times 10? 20. Does that look right? Think about other ways you could have solved this problem. Can you see any other patterns? Check out our playlist to find other ways of solving this exact same problem.